Did YouTubers kill Black Ops 4 zombies? That is a question that has been asked ever since the release of Black Ops 4. The situation that the zombies mode in that game got itself into, a lot of that, the blame was put onto the community. Instead of the developers or the publishers, Activision or Treyarch, out of any COD Zombies game that we've had from World at War 2, now Modern Warfare 3, Black Ops 4 stands out to me being the one where the failure of this game was put on the community, and more specifically, YouTubers. Since then we've had games that have been arguably worse, Vanguard, Modern Warfare 3, a lot of people would argue Cold War, but for all of those games most people would agree it was the developers that brought it on themselves, whether it be down to them releasing unfinished products in Vanguard, or Modern Warfare 3 being totally different to the standard zombies formula, but Black Ops 4 was different. This was supposed to be the game that pushed zombies to the next level releasing with four maps on day one, a brand new storyline, a brand new set of characters, a whole revamp to the perk system, new special weapons, a new gobblegum system being the elixirs, a huge customization system. I don't think there's anyone arguing that this was the most ambitious and biggest zombies to date, but it failed. It did. And instead of that being down to the developers, as it usually would be in any game, a lot of the blame was put on the community. It was us that ruined Black Ops 4 Zombies. But was it? Was all of the criticism valid? Was some of it just made up for attention, views? Were some of the complaints over the top or petty? Or was pretty much everything that was said about Black Ops 4 valid and true? And the reason why this conception existed was because everybody had a similar opinion. The reason why it felt like the community killed off Black Ops 4 rather than its makers was because a lot of people shared the same criticisms. And so wanting to see if any of this was true and if my complaints what I had back in the day were still valid and hold truth and it's hard to say for every little thing now because here we are what six years later some of the things that people had problems with BO4 back in the day have been fixed now so you can't put yourself back in that situation but we do have a lot more zombies games to compare it to now nobody can argue that Black Ops 4 was and still is the biggest zombies to date. Four maps on day one, nine, Voyage of Despair, Blood of the Dead, and Classified, which was a bonus map. Along with that came two different storylines, Chaos and Ether, also bringing two sets of characters. Gameplay-wise, other than the special weapons, there weren't really any differences. The main difference was the story aspect. So if you weren't interested in the storyline and you weren't bothered about the characters you were playing as, then whether you played the Ether maps or the Chaos maps probably wouldn't have mattered to you. And if you aren't interested in the story, then maybe you won't understand this or get it. But COD Zombies is heavily orientated around its story. It has its own universe, or I should say universes. And some of these Zombies maps that we've had over the years have been revolved around the storyline. Instead of the map being built first and then implementing the story into it, I think we've had some zombies maps where Troyok have thought of the story in advance and said, okay, that's where we're going to go with it and we now need to build a zombie map around that. And that's why the storyline is important. Zombies is kind of a weird game in that way, especially because, well, it's still a side mode. So even before Black Ops 4 released and we learned about this brand new chaos storyline, well, you've already got the Ether story that exists that has been going on since World at War for five games at this point. It is something that everybody is familiar with, everybody loves, and then to introduce this new one, which undoubtedly would take away from the Ether story, started to create a lot of problems, as you'll see later on when we get into the DLC cycle. The other big change with Black Ops 4 is, I would say, from World at War to Black Ops 2, each of those games feel relatively similar in terms of gameplay. You can play either of them and feel their familiarity. Yes, each map is different, but the actual feel of those three games feels similar. Black Ops 3 Zombies felt like an upgrade and had the most changes, but still felt like classic zombies. However, Black Ops 4, I think, took things to the next level. It introduced a brand new perk system, one that we'd had since the beginning, 2008. It introduced special weapons in a different way to what we saw them in Black Ops 3. We had them in that game, but let's be honest, they weren't very good. So there was this new crutch that you had, which is exactly what they were, very overpowered when you were in sticky situations, and Elixirs. There were a lot of other smaller gameplay changes that they made, but I don't think they really affected things, whereas these were major differences to how zombies worked. There is one other that I'll talk about in just a second, but first off, the perk system, I think, was a total failure. We've seen in Cold War that you can change perks, if done correctly, and the community will embrace it and love it, but 
the perk system in BO4. Genuinely, I said this during 2018 and going back to replay all of the maps for this video, still found myself facing the same problem. I just don't bother buying perks in BO4. I would always get Quick Revive first, then Juggernaug, and then probably Double Tap and Speed Cola in the older Zombies games. Every single match, perks were a necessity. That was one of the first things you saved up your money for. But in BO4, perks were always at the back of my mind because they didn't feel like you had to get them. And that is also a thing that Treyarch went for. They said, I remember them saying this, they wanted to make perks in this game feel like they weren't a crutch. Because on the older Zombies games, you would always have to go for Juggernaut, Quick Revive, the two essentials, and then some other random ones. They felt like that was a repetitive gameplay style and so wanted to switch that around. And what they ended up doing was, well, making them almost feel useless. It was a feature that I don't think needed changing and became a big complaint because, well, it stayed that way throughout the game's life cycle. It was a problem in every single map. And because of that, Juggernaut didn't exist on Black Ops 4, which meant that the health system, the three hit down system, changed. I think three hits that we saw in Black Ops 3 was perfect. Two hits that we had before then, so World of War to Black Ops 2 was very harsh, but they perfected the amount of hits it took for you to go down in BO3. And so then to remove Juggernaut in BO4 and change it to four hits made the game either too difficult for you or too easy. I mean, I think Cold War is a hell of a lot easier than Black Ops 4, and I think Black Ops 2 is a hell of a lot more difficult. Black Ops 3 balanced that perfectly, and I think Black Ops 4 would have been fine if we had Juggernaut, but the removal of that perk, and all of them to be honest, totally messed with the gameplay of Zombies, a formula that had worked. And Troyok knew this because when the game actually released, I think it was three hits you could take, but because of the amount of people complaining about the health system, they upped it to four hits. So the removal of the perk system also hurt the health system, which, well, is one of the most important things in COD Zombies. It is the heart of gameplay. You could, of course, change that in custom mutations, which is what I do now. Yes, you can't do Easter eggs like that, but if you just want a fun game of zombies and no stress, it's the only enjoyable way for me to play the game and relax. So that was a major criticism and still a valid one, a totally unnecessary change. Now, the other two differences in BO4 compared to other zombies games were the introduction of special weapons, which we first saw in Black Ops 3, but we properly had them in this game. They're fun, all of them, or most of them are really good, but... There was the argument that having a weapon that you can just whip out anytime you're cornered meant there was no challenge. Now you can see the contradiction here because I've just said BO4 is a hard game compared to BO3 or Cold War or Vanguard or Modern Warfare 3. I think it's about in the middle. It's not as hard as World at War BO1, BO2. I would say it's then BO4, then BO3, then Vanguard, then Cold War, then Modern Warfare 3 in terms of difficulty. But part of playing zombies was that you would just get trapped in a corner now and again, and it would be nigh and impossible to escape. You'd either get downed or your game would end. Special weapons would almost give you that second life, especially if you had something like the Ragnaroks. So that risk specifically was almost removed. I think COD Zombies over the years has become a hell of a lot more easier anyway. To be honest, this was something I never really had a problem with. I'm more of a sit back, relax, do one Easter egg and just dip kind of guy. I don't do high rounds. I like having fun in Zombies and these were definitely fun, but that was a popular community complaint. And the other one were the elixirs, just simply not being as good or as useful as the Gobblegums. A great feature introduced in Black Ops 3. You would then expect an upgrade on that in BO4, but instead the elixirs were a downgrade. So when you look at it that way, gameplay wise, Black Ops 4 didn't actually make any improvements from BO3. In fact, it was a step backwards. Was it terrible? No, and going back to play it now, it's still good. I like Black Ops 4 and I don't think the gameplay had to be an improvement. It just had to be on the same level as Black Ops 3, but there were just some things, mainly the perk system, which also affects the health, the main thing, that for some reason they ruined. I don't get it. So that leaves us with the storyline and maps and also false promises. Now the maps and storyline kind of go hand in hand because of how they revolve around one another. And whilst going back to play every single map for this video, just to get some gameplay of each and every one, I think I played each map for about 20 minutes. One thing I noticed was how incredibly detailed some of these maps were, how much effort and time went into making these, especially the chaos ones. If you look at 
Voyage of Despair, which takes place on the Titanic. Look how incredibly detailed this map is. And then you compare that to maps that we have nowadays. I mean, Forsaken and Black Ops Cold War, which is just a campaign mission. A lot of the Outbreak maps are just scrapped fire team maps. Modern Warfare 3 is the Warzone map. Vanguard was campaign and multiplayer maps. How lazy those maps are. And then you look at the amount of time, effort, and detail that went into pretty much every single Black Ops 4 map, even some of the remakes that we have, Blood of the Dead for example, has some pretty big differences compared to the original mob. I think it's an amazing remaster, not quite as good as the original, and honestly I'll say it again, I think if we had just had the OG perk system and health system, this map would be looked at totally different because actual map wise, the layout is fine, but the ones that really stand out for me are Voyage of Despair. I mean, a zombies map on the Titanic, how cool does that sound? How it actually turned out is different, I'll talk about that in a second. And the other one whilst I was playing was Dead of the Night. Look at the detail and effort Troy put into this map. You can tell how much love must have been put into it, which makes it even more sadder to know this is probably one of the least played maps ever in Zombies, and that's not awful, that's Troax, because they didn't promote it at all. There wasn't a trailer a week before or any hype around it, they just released it and that was it. Nobody spoke about it. But yes, this is a Zombies map on Black Ops 4. It looks amazing, and as I was walking around I was just kind of in awe at what I missed the first time around. The same can be said for Ancient Evil, but that actually doesn't mean they were great to play. And what I mean by that is the layout in a lot of Black Ops 4's maps was the problem. While the maps were gorgeous and looked amazing and the idea was amazing, I mean the Titanic, a manor, Delphi, a big Greek ancient temple, having Mob of the Dead back, but layout wise they're actually not that fun to play. I think of some of the more simpler uglier maps that we've had, Ascension, I mean you look around it's pretty plain and dull, boring, but it's considered one of the best maps because of how fun it actually is to play, how well the layout works. It's the same for Shadows of Evil, even though that map looks great as well, but the layout just works. That's the case for most top zombies maps, and so whilst a lot of Black Ops 4 zombies maps sound great, the idea of having one on the Titanic sounds good as a concept, actually, I don't think it really works as a zombies map. What should always be priority in any game when it comes to gameplay is fun. I'd have that over design any day. I think Tro kind of got it wrong here. If you could have the two coexisting side by side, of course you'd take that, but I would always take having fun in a zombies map any day of the week over them looking like this. I would take something like Verrucht or Nactor and Toten, a pretty plain boring map with not much to do in it, as long as I'm having fun playing it. And I find that such a shame because I've said it a thousand times, but I have to give Troy so much love because I can tell how much love they put into these maps, but I think they kind of forgot about the gameplay side. So the first map that we had was Blood of the Dead. It's essentially an extended version of Mob of the Dead. Is it as good as the original? No. A lot of people hate this map. I never have. I've always thought it was good, especially going back now and separating the perk system and the health system to the actual map. I think the map's good. Classified, I prefer to the original version of 5 anyway. I really like this map, especially considering it's a bonus map. We then had 9, which was a part of the Chaos Story. A lot of people love this, so there's really no problem with it. And we have Voyage of Despair, which was probably the most hated, and I have to agree. For DLC, we then got Dead of the Night, where the layout again just didn't really work. There were other things in this map, such as the werewolf, which could have been annoying, but you get that in every zombies map, you get a boss that's, you know, you, you kind of wish they weren't there. And not every map we get throughout DLC cycles are perfect. I mean, look at Black Ops 3, the amount of hate that Zetsubo no Shima got. So you can always write one off and just say, okay, they kind of missed the mark on this one, but the other maps were good. Was that the case with BO4? Well, after that we had Ancient Evil, which was okay, it was nothing to rave about. We then had Alpha Omega, a remake of Nuketown. I don't think as good as the original, but still not terrible. And then DLC4 was Tag to Totem, which was a remake of Call of the Dead. But you can see by these final two maps, they were remakes of older maps. And the complaint was, well, as we went on through the DLC life cycle, considering for the Ether story, we had no new zombies maps. They were remakes. Everybody said Troyok had kind of sacked this game off by this point. They'd said, you know what, we don't have the time, we don't have the budget, and people are also falling out of love with this game. Let's just create these two maps, not put as much effort into them as we should. And that was Alpha Omega and Tag to Totem. And whilst I think these maps are good, this is where it came back to the community or YouTubers, and people were saying, well, Luke, all of the complaining that you did about the game in the beginning, this is the result of that. You've ruined this game by causing the developers to think they 
shouldn't put effort into it because everybody hates the game anyway. There were also rumours of budget cuts and, well, we know Jason Blundell left, so of course that had a role to play with what happened towards these final two maps, but a lot of the blame was also put down to the community just simply complaining too much about the game in the beginning, about the perks, the health system, 50% of the maps not being great, and this was a result of that. But I go back to play these now and I still hold those same criticisms, and I don't think I'm being over the top or unrealistic i think the problems i think this game has are totally valid and should be said so i wanted to know well why did people even feel this way in the first place why did they put the failures of this game on the community and youtubers instead of the developers and activision when i feel like most of the criticism was valid and was true so i just went on to reddit to see what people were saying this was three years ago where someone wrote i think i know why people didn't like black ops 4 as much let's face it the cod zombies community for the most part is an absolute hive mind if a youtuber says something it's true in our eyes and can't be argued with example includes origins people saying it was the greatest map ever zetsubo youtubers saying it was the worst thing to ever be in zombies non-trial countries world war ii infinite warfare zombies etc all being bad those are just a few in a long line of examples i think the big problem with this community is how some of us can't form our own opinions so we take youtubers or content creators i mean i definitely think that's valid to a certain extent with some people not everyone there is a small hive mind where you hear someone else's opinion and you have to think the same thing because they must know what they're on about if they're a youtuber or person who's interacted with troy somebody else said i've been saying this for a long time youtubers say something people take their word as gospel when you listen to youtubers or the sub to form your opinions it's only when everyone moves on to the next game where you can actually form your own opinions on the previous ones that's the reason why the love hate cycle with these games exists and the final one said, everyone seems to dick ride Black Ops 3 Zombies and says it's the ultimate best Zombies experience and really over exaggerated. Saying that Zombies has fallen and it won't be like it once was ever since BO4 and Cold War came out, when in reality Cold War has more content than BO3. More replayability without break and onslaught and Easter eggs were made easier so more people can actually know and understand the massive storyline that Zombies has. Again, I think there is some truth to that. Every game that comes out since Black Ops 3 has been compared to that because that's the standard that was set by Treyarch, but then a lot of the other stuff is purely opinion based. Whilst yes, Cold War might have more content than Black Ops 3, a lot of people said it didn't because modes like Outbreak had a mixed reception. A lot of people didn't play them. So if you didn't play Outbreak in Cold War and you just played the standard round based maps, well, that game actually had a lot less content. So just answering the question, did the community kill Black Ops 4 zombies? I don't think so. Simply because all of the criticisms that a lot of people had going back to play the game now i think are valid were some things over exaggerated yes and looking at the games that we've got now and the maps in vanguard modern warfare 3 whatever you can definitely appreciate black ops 4 zombies more one thing that i really noticed was the amount of effort they put into these maps i really appreciated that now that we've got vanguard's maps or some of cold wars or modern warfare 3 and how little effort was put into them but that doesn't make the bad things any less relevant and I do think one of the reasons why this question was even asked in the first place was because a lot of people simply shared the same opinion and the more people that say the same thing in a certain group you then start to blame that whole group in this case the community for ruining what you think is good or not worthy of that criticism there are some aspects of bo4 zombies that i hugely appreciate now that we've gotten cold war vanguard and modern warfare 3 after that but i also think a lot of the complaints are still valid and were the reason why black ops 4 wasn't the game it should have been but maybe i'm wrong let me know your thoughts in the comment section below so there we go as always hopefully you've enjoyed the video today if you have drop a like rating make sure you are subscribed to stay up to date with the latest videos on the channel thank you all for watching and i will see you in the next one until then goodbye